Welcome to Nevada News Makers on the program today, the man who was in charge of the Silver State when the mob was kicked out of Nevada. Former Governor Robert List is our guest today. He'll talk about the mob being thrown out of the Silver State and the current governor's race. While on the Power Pundit panel today, Lisa Foster, Paul Lamboli, Bruce Breslow, and Pat Coward. It's all coming up next on an all-new Nevada Newsmakers. Nevada Newsmakers, brought to you in part by the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center, the world's largest industrial park, the resort at Red Hawk, and the Peppermill family of casinos. Here at the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center, just 10 minutes east of the park, we are constructing a 16-mile expressway connecting I-80 to Highway 50. This expressway provides direct access and will make it much easier to get to work. A direct route for employment opportunities. From 100% fiber optics to clean, reliable power, welcome to the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center, the largest industrial park in the world building economic prosperity for Nevadans. The resort at Red Hawk offers you two great dining choices. Experience David's Grill and Sports Bar or the Steakhouse at Red Hawk. The Steakhouse has received the Wine Spectator Award of Excellence based on a diverse selection of fine wines. To accompany the wines, the Steakhouse serves certified Angus beef steaks in a variety of cuts, fresh fish, chicken, and pasta dishes. For fun and casual dining, come to David's Grill and Sports Bar. David's is open seven days a week, serving breakfast, lunch, and dinner. The Resort at Red Hawk. Always the right choice. As an employer, did you know you can be held liable for negligent hiring? A background screening by Employer Links can uncover criminal records like alcohol and drug convictions. It can verify the applicant's education, driving records, and professional licenses. Employer Links can check civil records, registered sex offender records, and social security fraud. Hiring the right person shouldn't be a gamble. Call Employer Links. <sighs> employer Links, protecting your investment. My family started this business 27 years ago. We work hard to serve our customers and our community. But it's getting harder and harder to keep the doors open. For example, our workers' comp is going through the roof. Isn't anyone on my side anymore? The Retail Association of Nevada is. If you're a small business owner, we can cut your workers' comp by up to 50%. Lobby for your interests and keep you informed. Put us to work today. is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shan, a no-holds-barred political forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shan. And we return to the program here with former Governor Robert List. He was governor of the state of Nevada from 1979 to 1983. It's a pleasure to have you back here. Last time you were on the program, sir, um, we were just getting started talking about uh, your involvement not with the mafia, but getting the mafia out of gaming in southern Nevada. Would you, would you spin us the story of what, what things were like when you came into office, uh, what involvement uh, you saw with the mafia, and, and how they were eventually thrown out? What, what had happened, of course, was that in the early days there was no measure of suitability for a gaming license. A person who uh, came forward and had the money could simply open up. And that's really the way Nevada kicked off during the 30s and the 40s. And people migrated in here from other jurisdictions where they'd been involved in illegal gaming, largely, and uh, set up shop. And the, the, the biggest concern that began to evolve actually was an economic one. They weren't paying taxes. They were skimming. And gradually then during the 50s, during the Sawyer administration and then during the Laxall administration, we shifted into a, a mode in which corporate gaming uh, began to emerge. People like Howard Hughes came in. And so there was an evolution of the, uh, of the generational change of uh, the Baron Hiltons came to Nevada, legitimate good people. But at the same time, there was never any really concerted effort to go back and, and make certain that some of the folks that had been around uh, were as legitimate as, as they were presumed to be. And uh, so in early 1979, I think it was within 60 days of my taking office as governor, uh, there was a, a major federal disclosure of wiretap information uh, that indicated that, in fact, there were hidden ownerships in a number of hotels and casinos. So we, uh, we immediately opened uh, investigations. We called people forward. 
Uh, and in the end, we took away, I think, seven gaming licenses in the first six months of my office. We, we actually uh, revoked the licenses from the Aladdin, uh, from the Dunes, the Riviera, the Tropicana, uh, the Stardust, the Fremont, and the Slots of Fun, and uh, kicked the people out. And that meant finding, uh, encouraging buyers to come forward uh, and invest the kinds of money uh, that was entailed there. So. I've never really added it up, but I, I know that in today's dollars, uh, it would be in the billions that uh, were reinvested in Nevada by new people coming in. And by and large, uh, it, it happened pretty fast. Uh, a lot of hard work. We had to actually to force one of the places, uh, the Aladdin, to sell. We actually had to close it down. And uh, they took us to court, and we fought it out in front of uh, Judge Claiborne and uh, actually won the case, and we we've, we've physically closed the place. And then there was a fight, incidentally, over who was going to get to buy it, whether it was going to be Johnny Carson or Wayne Newton. And right. <laughs> that got a lot of interesting publicity. So, so that was really the end, of the end of the mob and the mafia in the state of Nevada. Well, at least in the, in the casinos, correct? I that's mean, correct. Because they still in the were involved you know, in other rackets going on around that. That's, that's correct. But we basically cleaned it out. There, there turned out there was one other one after that. We had to redo the Stardust and find a second new buyer. And uh, I don't think there's ever been a suggestion of any uh, mafia or mob or underworld involvement in the casino industry in Nevada uh, since that time, and I'm real proud of that. Now, Governor, many of those properties will, were built from loans from the Teamsters, correct? Is that kind of how the mob got their, their hands on the, the Las Vegas properties? Well, I, uh, surely that was a, was a major source of revenue. The legitimate uh, commercial banks were not interested. Uh, and there were some relationships there uh, between the Teamsters and the te pension fund, especially, and uh, and what took place in Nevada. Were there any threats on on, on your life or your physical well-being or your family's? Uh, there were. Uh, there were a lot of security concerns, and uh, uh, these guys didn't. Most of them did not go graciously. Okay. Uh, <laughs> how, how do you feel um, with the fact that the mayor of Las Vegas? was a lawyer that defended a lot of these mobsters. Well, uh, he did, in fact, uh, but uh, Oscar, uh, you know, Oscar's a lawyer. He, uh, he, he never really was in business with them. He, uh, he made a very strong, uh, powerful living out of it, did a good job for them. Um, and it, it, frankly, when uh, Oscar talked to me years ago about getting into politics, I said, Oscar, You'll never get elected, you know. Uh, what do you want to run for? He said, I might run for lieutenant governor, is what he was thinking about at the time. I said, Oscar, the past association with these clients, you'll, just, you'll, you'll never get elected to anything. Well, he shocked me, and he shocked a lot of people in southern Nevada. He's been a tremendously popular mayor. And uh, I understand his wife doesn't think he'd be a good governor because he isn't, uh, apparently doesn't like to crunch numbers. But uh, he'd be a formidable candidate for whatever he wants to run for. And if you don't like to crunch numbers, you can hire people as governor to do that for you, can't you? You can. <laughs> um, very few governors have enjoyed uh, the accounting and the finance side of it as much as Governor Gwynn has, as a matter of fact. He's been a real numbers guy, and of course that was recently noted in Time Magazine that he took on some tough financial issues. Uh, but. Sure, you hire people and you surround yourself with good, talented folks. That's now, what when, we do on this show. When you were governor, you also took on some tough financial issues. The, the tax shift, or shaft as some people call it, in 1981 occurred during, during your administration. Can you talk a little bit about I, that? And I'm going to ask one thing. Let's take a commercial break because I want to have a good answer on this. So we'll be right back on Nevada Newsmakers. We'll form a <laughs> governor list right after this. For a videotape copy of any Nevada Newsmakers program, call 775-857-2244. The tapes are $20 each, including shipping. Since its creation more than a decade ago, the Southern Nevada Water Authority has focused on three goals. Preserving water quality, improving water conservation in Southern Nevada, and meeting the community's current and future water needs. Through thoughtful planning, responsible management, and collaboration, it's succeeding. As we move into the 21st century, the authority continues to embrace sustainable water development and efficient water use. That's our promise to Nevada. I tell you, John, this industry has really changed. Tell me about it. You seem to do pretty well last year. What's your secret? <laughs> no secrets. Although I'll tell you something. The smartest thing I did was sign up with Pro Group Management. Really? Yeah, they uh, do workers' comp, right? Yeah, their services are great. Hmm. 
And get this, they saved me 30%. I've heard they saved others 50%. That works for me. Pro Group Management. Finally, workers' comp that works for you. Reno's best dining values are all at one casino, the Pepper Mill. You can enjoy great savings on our popular specials. Pepper Mill's Coffee Shop offers daily lunch specials, low-carb dining, and all your favorite comfort foods. You'll find sensational lunch specials featuring Reno's freshest seafood, sushi, pasta, and more at Oceano. And early bird specials at Reno's Premier Steakhouse and Romanza Ristorante Italiano. The best values are at the Pepper Mill. Where are you dining? The materials we rely on every day come from the ground, and modern mining technology brings them to us cleaner and safer than ever before. To learn more about America's natural resources, visit NMA.org, the National Mining Association. And now, back to Nevada Newsmakers with Sam Shad. Sometimes those commercial breaks just fly. We're talking to former <laughs> Governor Robert List here on Nevada Newsmakers. Let me reiterate the question uh, that I posed before commercial break. You presided over the tax shift in 1981 that moved really uh, the, the basic structure of Nevada finances from property tax to sales tax. Can you talk a little bit about the politics involved in that? Well, we've been uh, we've been witness as next door neighbors of what was going on in California, and they had a, a major uh, initiative down there that led to. Uh, a, a, a vote in California and to reduce property taxes dramatically and Nevada picked up on that same theme uh, and there was an effort here to to roll back property taxes which which frankly had escalated beyond belief and uh, beyond affordability and so we took it on and it was a very controversial uh, topic but I got it through the legislature uh, Democrat dominated legislature and Basically, we increased the sales tax, uh, and we took the sales tax off of food for home consumption. We took the sales tax off of prescription drugs, uh, and we left it on uh, in such a fashion that the tourists paid about 30% of it through their restaurants and purchases and so forth. And the 100% of the tax relief that came off went to Nevada taxpayers. So on balance, uh, and on top of that, we cut the budget, so overall. And uh, it, was a, it was a tough economic time because, as, as you may recall, or, or you may read in the history books, you know, yeah, at this point, I was six. Uh, oh, stop. <laughs> the, uh, the nation was going through a real uh, crisis at that time economically. We were in uh, double digit inflation, and we had uh, tremendous rising interest rates and the misery index. And something, uh, uh, the, the effects on Nevada were dramatic. We had a gas shortage. And so our revenues plunged, and so we cut government, and we made a lot of big-time changes. And frankly, none of those were uh, were addressed again after that in any significant detail until this last legislative session, when, of course, they uh, increased taxes substantially and changed the structure a bit. Okay, so what do you think about uh, TASC, the Nevada version of Tabor? and uh, Sharon Engel's initiative, the Prop 13 type initiative. Uh, I, I frankly haven't studied them yet in detail. Uh, it's going to be interesting to watch them roll out. I think there's still a lot of, of uh, embedded concern about uh, what was done in the last legislative session. Uh, I, I do think that the fact that, that we did not put a, a tax on, on business revenues, uh, sort of an income tax, uh, stabilized the political picture a bit. But it's going to be interesting to watch this roll out uh, with the governor's race going on and, and uh, primaries uh, on both sides. Uh, we're going to know more about this probably than we ever wanted to know before it's done. Have you endorsed anyone in the governor's race yet? I'm supporting uh, Congressman Gibbons. I, uh, uh, I've, I've enjoyed uh, a long-standing respect for him. I believe that, uh, uh, that there are other candidates in the race who would be good governors, frankly. Uh, but uh, I believe that he's he's the strongest and the best, and I think his chances of winning are uh, are excellent. Are you surprised at the vitriol from Governor Gwynn and people like Jim Rogers, who owns this television station, um, uh, against Jim, uh, Jim Gibbons? Well, I know there's there have been uh, there have been some uh, some suggestions made by people that uh, that that he would not have a great relationship uh, with them. 
But uh, I think as time goes along here, we'll see uh, we'll see some mending of those fences and and. Uh, Anybody who's been in politics as long as, as Jim Gibbons has been in politics is going to have some people that disagree with him on some policies and, and priorities. And uh, I think he's committed to education. I hope he is. I believe he is to higher education as well as uh, our, our uh, K through 12. And I think that will evolve in the campaign and, and others will be satisfied with that. Okay, you've been a big supporter of Yucca Mountain. Um, in recent days, uh, we've seen the, the budget slashed again for Yucca Mountain on the federal level, and now a whole new series of emails that have come out uh, that have put this project in disrepute. Uh, are you still th saying that it's going to happen? I believe it is, Sam. Uh, one thing about the budget that hasn't really been talked about is that they, their, their actual spending during this past year was lower than the appropriation uh, that had been approved. So there's actually a, a, the, the flow rate of money uh, has actually enabled them to save about $100 million from last year's expenditure. Uh, I'm told by the folks who are working on the project that, that they have sufficient budget to continue on track and online. Uh, as far as the email thing, I mean, I, I welcome this kind of quality assurance. I think that the more people look at this, the, the more assurance we're going to have that we have good science. And uh, Nevadans deserve that. So I'm not concerned about it. I think it, it, there are going to be more uh, microscopes on it, and in the end, we'll have a better product. Governor, will will Yucca Mountain being completed in Nevada result in more revenue for the state, where we might not have to have the kind of tax battles that we had in 1981 or in 2003? Well, it's a 60 billion dollar project. It's it's the largest public works project in the history of the planet. Most of that money will be spent right here in Nevada. It's bigger than Hoover Dam and the Panama Canal. Uh, combined in terms of expenditure it means a lot of jobs. Uh, if, for example, uh, we get money in lieu of taxes for the value of that project, it, the money that's going to be spent on it is more money than has ever been spent in total, end to end, on the Las Vegas Strip, for example, to build these multi-billion dollar hotels. So this could be a part of our tax base. So Jim Rogers could get the first class university system he wants funded by, nuclear by the nuclear waste repository. I believe he could and I think that the research and the development in, in science and technology having to do with energy in all forms, not just nuclear, but, but solar and wind in Nevada could all be combined and make this university a, a fabulous uh, a place to be. Okay, one word answer. Do you think it's going to happen as long as Senator uh, Reid is the minority leader? Well, uh, probably it, it's not going to open while he's a minority leader unless he lives for another uh, 20 years, probably. Okay, but, uh, and, and that's the answer. Uh, that's <laughs> we'll the answer. be right back on the right. Newsmaker. Thanks, Governor. You're always welcome. Thank you. Nice to see you. This is Nevada Newsmaker. This is one of Sierra Power's main generating plants. It's right next door to the Tajarino Industrial Center. These plants provide all the clean, reliable power that businesses need. TRI has three independent power generation facilities on site. For sensitive manufacturing companies and high-tech firms, this benefit is invaluable. Welcome to the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center, the largest industrial park in the world, building economic prosperity for Nevadans. The Nevada Beer Wholesalers encourages the responsible consumption of beer. The Nevada Beer Wholesalers Association are sponsors and participants in many community-based efforts such as school education programs, Safe Ride Home, recycling programs, alcohol-free after-prom and graduation parties, safe voting campaigns, and designated driver programs. They are family-owned businesses employing 2,000 Nevadans. They also collect and pay the state excise tax. The Nevada Beer Wholesalers Association, delivering more than just beer. The resort at Red Hawk offers you two great dining choices. Experience David's Grill and Sports Bar or the Steakhouse at Red Hawk. The Steakhouse has received the Wine Spectator Award of Excellence based on a diverse selection of fine wines. To accompany the wines, the Steakhouse serves certified Angus beef steaks in a variety of cuts, fresh fish, chicken, and pasta dishes. For fun and casual dining, come to David's Grill and Sports Bar. David's is open seven days a week, serving breakfast, lunch, and dinner. The resort at Red Hawk. Always the right choice. For more than a decade, the Southern Nevada Water Authority has been helping the community embrace conservation as a way of life. 
That includes replacing more than 50 million square feet of grass with water smart landscaping. During the worst drought on record, watering restrictions and tough landscaping codes have reduced the community's water use by billions of gallons, even as thousands of new residents were moving into Nevada. That's smart water management, and that's our promise to Nevada. And now, back to Nevada Newsmakers with Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we're joined by our Power Pundit panel today. Paul Lamboli is here. He is a lawyer. Pat Coward with Career in Nevada. Bruce Breslow with C.B. Richard Ellis, former mayor of Sparks. And Lisa Foster, deputy chief of staff for Governor Gwynn. What do the governor think um, over the last couple of weeks? We've had uh, Randolph Townsend coming on here and saying that uh, he thinks that all the taxes should be rolled back because we're just collecting too much money. Senator Raggio was more like... Well, we need to take a look at it. What did the governor think about that? Well, I, I think the governor has worked so hard to create a stable tax base. Um, I think there's a concern that we would roll back taxes at this point in time. I think we've done a good thing with our surplus. We have rebated that surplus. And if we have a surplus again, that could certainly happen one more time. But to actually go backwards in time when there's still mental health needs, social service needs, just doesn't seem like a good idea. Mr. Breslow? Well, I think what the governor did was terrific. I know the businesses weren't happy with it, but everybody knew when he was elected that he was the guy that was going to try to stabilize our tax base here because our tax system in Nevada was, was not working. He took all the political uh, attacks on himself. He knew it was going to come, waited till smartly with the advice of people like Lisa for the second term. But now we have a much better tax system. And, you know, thank God the economy's good. But we can't Republican? go backwards. I am a Republican, believe it or not. Yeah, I just check on this. Yeah. Uh, Pat, you know, there's an awful lot of people on the right and the left looking at this saying, we're just collecting so much excess gaming taxes and sales taxes. The projections are way ahead at this point, again, from where we were last time. What do you think? You know, I, I think that uh, you've got to look at the surplus. Uh, I think last session... We had a lot of money, uh, and I think uh, we made up for some of the deficits that we had, like Lisa mentioned. But, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the great thing about the payroll tax, you can make adjustments up and down on that area. At least you can bring it down a little bit, and that's really where, where a lot of that money is coming from is the uh, payroll tax. And uh, I think it should be looked at. Okay. And, Paul, you want to... Well, I think the executive as well as the legislative branches have a lot of flexibility in addressing the tax policies, but I think they're all very cognizant of the rainy day needs. Yes. And I, I don't think anybody is about to abandon the notion of, of rainy day needs, because it'll, it'll come. Mm -hmm. The key is not looking at it as a license to spend when you have the more money. Ah, yeah. Uh, yeah. That, yeah. That's true. Right. Yeah. And I yeah. think you're right. The rainy day fund is a very, very important aspect, because when we did have some tough times, the governor had to step in there and take a lot so of that much, money. how much more would you increase it by? Um... You know, I'm not a physical person on that, but I'd say... Harold Villardo said 10% of the budget would be a good thing to have in there. That's not bad. Mm -hmm. You know, and the surplus is actually gaming and sales tax because our economy is doing so well. I mean, I think our state is really the envy of so many other mm -hmm. states yeah. in the country. It's true. Um, For the first time. I mean, yeah. we uh, are. We're doing the... so very, very yeah. well. And so I think if we're looking at where the surplus really came from right now, we need to look at gaming and sales. And we certainly, we don't want to stop any, any of those from um, coming into the state the way they are coming into the state right now. Uh, true, but, uh, you know... Uh, those, there are those that would say that instead of rebating the money back, we should perhaps lower the taxes and then we won't have to have a rebate and it would be more efficient. Okay, let me mm -hmm. move on here. Um, seems like there is some fiscal sanity coming to the Board of Regents here with them saying that uh, the new president for UNR shouldn't be paid more uh, than John Lilly. In fact, there should even be a, a, a range here. That combined with uh, raising the, uh, the, the grade point average uh, uh, to be able to get into the university system and qualify for the Millennium Scholarship. Mm -hmm. These are good things, eh? Sam, um, you're looking at me. <laughs> let, let me just throw something out. As a parent, when my son was looking at colleges two years ago, we bought all the you know, U.S. News, World Report, all the magazines. University of Nevada here in Reno was not listed. Not that they weren't ranked. They weren't listed. So it's about time that some people are doing some changes on the academic side because mm -hmm. we, we want to be proud. And once you do that, other money starts flowing in and donations and things like mm -hmm. that. Well, one of the things that um, you know, has always confused me here is you know, coming from England, you know, not everybody gets to go to university. You know, uh, there's no uh, guaranteed birthright here. Uh, it, it seems to me to be smarter on all levels that we, we go in that direction here in the Silver State too, don't you? Oh, I, I totally agree. I think, uh, I think the university is more of 
geared to the academics. You have community college to fill the gap in some of the other areas in trade and some of that. And I think that's just utilizing our university system uh, totally to the best possible advantage. I think it should be more efficient and geared to the academics on that side. And I think, Bruce, that, that's where you're going to start seeing some of the the increases in, in the caliber of our colleges and the ranking of our colleges. Okay, uh, but we're going to have to change the way that we fund the system, though, aren't we? Because otherwise, aren't the presidents going to be howling that UNLV and UNR will lose money and the community colleges will gain money just because the way the system is set up? Well, there will be changes that will be necessary. And, and universities are always going to be under under uh, fiscal responsibility requirements and, and real constraints, especially when they're, they're state universities. They aren't featured with the endowments. A few state universities are, such as Texas. But uh, um, I think Nevadans have approached the uh, higher education as being, one, first a demand for opportunity to, to have access. And secondly, now, I think they're appreciating the need for academic improvements, mm -hmm. that uh, the, the schedule of academic requirements is going to be increased. And I think that will enhance the university system. It also brings in, I think, its own fiscal responsibilities, but also it adds to uh, the cash flow. There will be other things that come its way. Grants, there are an awful lot of grants as the academic programs increase. Mm -hmm. There are a lot more eligible activities for funding. Mm -hmm. And that's where we've got to leave it. Folks, thanks so much. We'll be right okay. back on about a Newsmakers after this. Nevada Newsmakers, brought to you in part by the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center, the world's largest industrial park. The Resort at Red Hawk, and the Peppermill family of casinos. South Reno's hot spot for food, fun, and friends is the Tamarack Junction. Enjoy great food 24 hours a day in the dining car restaurant. For a quick bite and the best sandwiches in town, it's the Whistle Stop Deli. And for the best appetizers and menu selections, and a large variety of cocktails, beers, and martinis, it's Sully's Sports Bar, Grill, and Nightclub. The Tamarack Junction is your junction for fun. South Virginia and Amati Ranch Parkway. So, uh, who do you use for workers' comp? Pro Group Management. Ah, I've heard some good things about them. Oh, you bet. Employee background checks, safety training, claim seminars. Oh, and here's the great part. If you have an issue, they work for you, not against you. Sounds perfect. And expensive. Well, that's the best part. They saved me 30%. I've heard they saved others 50%. Works for me. Pro Group Management. Finally, workers' comp that works for you. Happy Hour at the Pepper Mill. As always, you can watch Nevada Newsmakers 24 hours a day at NevadaNewsmakers.com. On our next program, we'll try to explain the government's new prescription drug program. Really, join us then.